Imagine this, you live on the 21st floor and the elevator in your building is constantly out of order because of software bugs. Now, would you try to appreciate the unexpected exercise or would you spend countless sleepless nights creating a robust, performant, and memory-safe programming language from scratch like the creator of Rust, Great and Horror? In this video, we'll explore Rust's fascinating origin story and its rocky history going from an obscure side project to the most loved programming language in the world. We'll touch on interesting early experiments and dead ends, how Rust was able to get so many things right despite the challenges it faced, and where Rust is headed next. In 2006, Graydon Hoare realized that memory safety bugs, which were prevalent in C and C++, were causing the elevator in his building to constantly break down. The pain of having to trek 21 flights of stairs every time this happened was the driving force behind Graydon's mission to build a better language. It was very clear what Rust was supposed to be from the very beginning, a compiled, concurrent, safe systems programming language. It was less clear, however, how to actually get there. In fact, the Rust we know and love today looks nothing like the original version of Rust all those years ago. To understand how Rust evolved into the most loved programming language, we need to understand the six important phases in Rust's evolution. During the early years, Rust was a side project Graydon worked on by himself after his day job at Mozilla. He was determined not to invent something flashy or new. Instead, Rust's major innovation would be taking great ideas from other languages and combining them in novel ways. Rust is heavily influenced by five lineages. The NLI and Hermes family, the Erlang language, the Sather language, the New Squeak, Aleph, and Limbo family, and the Napier and Napier 88 family. After several iterations and improvements to the language design, Graydon garnered enough confidence in his progress to show his work to a few colleagues at Mozilla. However, reviews were mixed. Some people were extremely interested and thought it was brilliant. Others said it was a pipe dream and would never work. Fortunately, the supporters outweigh the skeptics, and in the end, Mozilla saw Rust's potential and officially backed the project in 2009. Graydon was ecstatic about Mozilla's investment in the Rust project and led the research and development team in the initial years alongside many other language fanatics within the company. One of the major contributors, Patrick Walton, said, everyone really felt like they were working on something that could really be big. During these early years, Rust looked nothing like the language we know today. Ironically, it actually looked a lot like its later nemesis, Go. It had green threads, a garbage collector, features that are no longer in the language at all and Rust was constantly evolving. In fact, many thought the language was having an identity crisis because there were so many major changes in quick succession. However, it was also during this time period, Rust's compiler got rewritten from OCaml to Rust, marking a major milestone in the language's development and growing maturity. Soon enough, Rust transformed from a small side project into a maturing language with real potential. The vision Graydon brought into existence was taking on a life of its own. Around 2012, Rust's trajectory was significantly impacted by two major events. Mozilla's experimental browser engine Servo began incorporating Rust into its codebase. Rust benefited greatly from this tightened feedback loop with Servo's commercial team. This proximity enabled a rapid, iterative testing of new ideas, enhancing the language's development. The second major event happened in 2013. Graydon, the original creator of Rust, decided to depart from the project, leaving it in the hands of Mozilla. In a blog post, he shared his mixed feelings about the various changes Rust underwent as it evolved from a personal project to a community-driven one. Surprisingly, Graydon said he would have prioritized simplicity over performance and expressivity, and would have gone with a more standard green thread runtime with coroutines. Needless to say, if Graydon would have pushed his own vision more assertively, Rust would have been twin brothers with a language we now know is obviously inferior. Following Graydon's departure, Rust adopted a distributed leadership model, ensuring no single person had total control. This approach allowed many different perspectives to be considered, fostering thorough discussions and establishing robust decision-making processes. In 2014, Rust drew inspiration from Python's PEP system and introduced the RFC or Request for Comment process which promoted thoughtful discussion and collaboration for new Rust features. The launch of Cargo and Crates.io soon followed to create effective package management and central repositories. The Rust team were inspired by Ruby's Bundler and RubyGems.org, as well as JavaScript's npm and npmjs.com. Yehuna Katz, known for his work on Ruby's Bundler, was even brought onto the Rust team. Rust's development was further influenced by three distinct user groups. C++ engineers who brought their systems and low-level programming expertise 
valued Rust type system, and package management. Ruby and JavaScript developers who contributed their experience with ergonomics and tooling were drawn to Rust's safety and performance guarantees. And functional programming advocates from the Haskell community appreciated Rust's strong type system and its meta-language components. These diverse contributions shaped Rust into a language known for robustness and versatility. With a distributed, community-driven process established, Rust transitioned into a new era. By 2014, Rust had already generated a ton of buzz among developers, with early adopters using it in production environments despite it not having reached its 1.0 milestone. But the language was still undergoing many changes, often unexpectedly, which prompted the urgent need for a stable release to meet the growing demand for production usage. To avoid disruptive updates seen in other language communities, like Ruby's transition from 1.8 to 1.9, or Python's transition from version 2 to version 3, the Rust team prioritized immediate decision-making for essential features while carefully postponing non-essential features to protect end-users from potential disruptions. This approach led to the strategic decision to keep the core language minimal while extending functionality through libraries. The focus shifted firmly to stability and backwards compatibility ensuring no further breaking changes would occur. As a result, on May 15, 2015, Rust version 1.0 was officially released. This was great news for the Rust team, but what happened next, no one could have predicted. In 2016, just one year after Rust version 1.0 was released, Rust was voted the most loved programming language by the Stack Overflow Developer Survey, a title it proudly holds till this day. Developers loved Rust's unique approach to systems-level programming, prioritizing speed, safety, and concurrency. These features, coupled with Rust's emphasis on zero-cost abstractions and efficiency interoperability, allowed developers to write highly performant applications confidently. During the next few years, the Rust team focused on increasing widespread adoption by refining several critical areas, ecosystem, tooling, stability, and community. The ecosystem was further expanded by exceptionally well-written libraries like Surde, Diesel, and Rayon. One of the biggest features added to Rust during this period was async await, which dramatically simplified asynchronous operations and improved code readability. New developer tools were added like Rust Format, a built-in formatter, Clippy, a built-in linter, Rust Analyzer, a language server for Rust allowing strong IDE integrations, and ongoing improvements to the Rust compiler enhancing developer efficiency. In 2018, the Rust team introduced additions, a way to introduce major changes every three years without breaking existing code, in addition to the existing regular six-week release cycle for incremental updates, which allows for quick iteration and consistent improvement. The number of Rust meetups and conferences grew along with a surge of online communities such as Discord servers and subreddits. Development in these key areas further boosted Rust's industry adoption. Companies like Dropbox, AWS, Figma, Discord, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft not only started integrating Rust into their stacks, but also started contributing to the Rust project, enhancing its functionalities and robustness. Only a few months into the global tragedy that happened in 2020, Mozilla was hit hard and had to lay off a quarter of its workforce. Many of the original contributors who have been with Rust for close to a decade found new homes at major tech companies like Amazon and Facebook. In response to uncertainties about its future, Mozilla quickly established the Rust Foundation, along with companies like AWS, Google, and Microsoft. With the mission of stewarding the Rust programming language, nurturing the Rust ecosystem, and supporting the set of maintainers governing and developing the project. Despite the series of drama which followed soon after the creation of the Rust Foundation, the core principles of the Rust project remained unfazed. Rust continued to earn the title of most loved programming language for the sixth, seventh, and eighth consecutive year, demonstrating its resilience and enduring appeal in the developer community. Rust has come a long way, from the brainchild of one man, to being adopted by Mozilla, to getting sponsored by major tech corporations, and winning the hearts of developers year after year. But the best is yet to come. No other language is used in such a wide array of domains. Rust is a language with production adoption in cloud infrastructure, serverless, web applications, data science, embedded systems, operating systems, AI, the list goes on. Even the US government has recommended using Rust to protect against cybersecurity threats from international adversaries. But what about elevators, the problem Rust was originally created to solve? 
You'll be happy to know that Rust is indeed being used there as well. A developer who professionally works on elevator firmware wrote to Graydon and let him know that they're now writing the software in Rust. A real circle of life moment. Personally, I fell in love with Rust around 2021 and I've been a devoted Rust station rewriting everything in Rust ever since. Coming from a front end background, Rust taught me a lot about low level memory management, interoperability with other languages, and the power of a strongly typed language. Also, having the ability to write anything from web servers to desktop apps to operating systems is great. It opens the door for more opportunities and allows me to adapt quickly, which is increasingly important as AI begins to lower the barrier to entry for programming jobs and the future is increasingly uncertain. If you'd like to start or fast track your Rust learning journey, make sure to get your free Rust cheat sheet at letsgetrusty.com slash cheat sheet. Hope you've enjoyed this video and remember to stay rusty.